Hello and welcome back to this series on text classification and Spacey 3.0 for digital humanists or really anyone who's interested in doing text classification, which, as we learned in the last two videos, is a supervised learning method where we assign classes to a piece of text, and it can be a percentage of different classes at one time. So what we're going to do in this video is kind of try to get ourselves to the point where in a couple of videos we can start working with this script, which is going to run very similarly as we saw in the last video, except we're going to work with domain specific data. In this video series, we are going to be working with Holocaust data from oral testimonies held at the United States Holocaust Memorial Museum. And what we want to do is we want to get the data, get the data, and then get the data in the correct format for text classification. Ideally, by the end of the next video, you're going to have something that looks kind of like this. You're going to have data that looks like a set of tuples that has two indices. Index 0 is going to be the text itself, and this can be a text of any size. I oftentimes recommend varying sizes because data in the real world is varied, and I recommend text from one sentence to multiple sentences. really kind of depends on what you want your classification model to do. And so here we have a classification sentence, and you can read it for yourself, pause the video. Um, but we have a numerical integer or a label in the second uh, index one, so the second position in the tuple. And this zero indicates that this is dealing with the context of smell. It's a smell classifier label. So zero indicates smell, and if you go all the way down to the end of this list, you'll find I've got uh, samples from a couple different things. I believe smell and hunger are the two things that I have represented in this model. And I think you have to go down because I believe I have something like 500 training samples from each one. But that's going to be what we work with in this video. You'll find, and I've emphasized, here we go, you can see hunger here with the uh, number one as the label. Uh, oftentimes when you look at text classification tutorials, they kind of do what I did in the last video, teach you how to work with data that's already been cultivated, data that already exists. But in the digital humanities, we don't have a lot of data that is properly formatted yet. And that's because data science and approaching data and from a data science point of view is still kind of nascent and new in the digital humanities. So in this video, I want to kind of take you through the steps of how to cultivate your own really good text classification training set from the ground up. In this video, we're going to cover the concepts of how to do it. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to actually implement it in code. So in this scenario, we've got, let me pull up my atom over here. We have something that looks like this. You can't tell probably because of the, the way the text is framed on atom, but I have 520 or 540 oral testimonies that I transcribed using Tesseract. And in my next series, I'm going to cover how I transcribe things using Tesseract models uh, for digital humanists. But if we take a look at this, we see that we, we have our oral testimonies where you have questions and answers, and the OCR is actually really good on these. Um, but what we don't have is we don't have well-cleaned data in the sense that we, we don't have um, line breaks separated out. We also don't have well-cultivated data in the sense that we don't have um, segments of text delineated. And that's not going to be a problem at all. We're going to work with the double line breaks, how they're formatted here, to separate everything out into double line breaks and segments that have X length. So maybe we, we decide uh, segments that only have uh, five words will actually include in our data set. Uh, and what we're going to do with that is we're first going to create an entire uh, collection of these 540 oral testimonies as a list of segments, a list of segments. And I'm going to count a segment as anything like this, a segment of a question, a segment of an answer. We're going to go over that in the next video. Again, this is all conceptual, the different steps to the process. Once we do that, we are then going to go back to our knowledge with Gensum that I've introduced in past videos, and we're going to create a word to vec model, which is going to read over all of these corpora, all of these oral testimonies, and it's going to be quite easy because these, while varying in length from anywhere from 5 to 50 pages, uh, it's not going to take the model too long to create a really good honed model of and provide us with really good word vectors. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use those word vectors to explore terms conceptually. Now, I'm not going to reveal the algorithm that I've been developing at the Smithsonian and the Holocaust Museum, but what I am going to do is I'm going to walk you through some of the steps of how to use word vectors to get a sense of um, words that might be used to classify a text. So what we're going to be working with in this series is to, are two different classifiers. 
We're going to look for a classifier for the concept of smell and a classifier for the concept of hunger. And so we're going to try to produce what we would call a binary classification model that looks at a text and it tells you the degree to which that that text, a little segment, something like, like what it was trained on, something like that, how much of that is actually dealing with the concept of smell and how much of it is dealing with the concept of hunger. And if it doesn't deal with either one, both of those numbers, as we're going to see, are going to be quite low. And then in the next video, we're going to see how we actually generate automatically using word vectors an entire training set so that we can then in the, in the following video use that training set to then train a spacey 3x model as you're going to see and as i've emphasized on this channel many times whenever you're doing machine learning besides the actual you know, reading up on the literature 90 percent of your time is getting the data and getting it in the correct format. And that's where I devote most of my time in my tutorials, because oftentimes that's the stuff that I see lacking in other tutorials online that are just using off the shelf data sets. So that's where we're going in the next couple of videos. Stick around if you enjoyed this video and you feel like you're, you're gonna benefit from this, please like and subscribe down below and consider contributing to my Patreon account so you can get your name listed at the end credits.